Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Some of you guys remember, I guess it was a year ago in December, I bought this Mojave engine and I was ready to work on it and so forth, actually ready to bolt it up to an all-terrain vehicle and I found some problems and let me show you what they are. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to, you know, take all these out, right? Not that big a deal. You try to set yourself up with a nice container so you don't lose any of this stuff, right? Not at all difficult, just a matter of getting them loose and taking them off. This engine's a little easier to work on because currently it is not on an all-terrain vehicle. If it was, I don't think it'd be this easy. Generally speaking, some of you guys know this, I don't much care for water-cooled engines. I just kind of consider it something else to go wrong. But once you get all those out, right, you take this off, try not to ruin the gasket. And here's the problem we have, right? And if I take a moment to just show you this, you'll see very, very quickly that the timing chain tensioner is at its maximum. And just, just take a second. Some folks say, why don't you ever show your work? Well, there you go, right? It's all the way out, and you can see there's quite a bit of play. Now, what I don't want to do is go boing, boing on this now, because without with the tension or loose, it's just going to push it out, and I don't want to skip and get into trouble. Once you figure out your timing chain is too loose and that you have to change it, as I did with this one, um, now, in my case, I had to line up a bunch of things. First thing I had to do was get a timing chain. Um, the Kawasaki timing chains, if you get a real Kawasaki Mojave timing chain from one of the brand name people, they're expensive. They're about a hundred bucks. This is a China clone, and some of you are going to say, oh, you're going to regret that. And maybe I will, but for the time being, it is guaranteed for a year, so let's go with it. Um, I'm going to show you. You want to set it up for top dead center, and I'll show you how to do that. Before you do anything with the timing chain, very, very important here, you want to make sure that you're at top dead center. That's the piston up and bolt valves closed. So, I could see the lobes out that way. It's not pushing on the follower. So that's closed. I could see the lobes right here. Once again, not pushing on the follower. So those valves are closed. Very important that your valves are closed because you don't want to mess around with your valves open because if you jump time, piston come up, smash valves, bad day. So after that, and I'm, I hope I can show you this successfully. I'm hoping you're able to see that little T there. And um, what kind of job am I doing showing that to you? Hopefully I'm showing you a little T there um, on the flywheel. Try a few different angles. Hopefully it'll show up. So I know I'm at top dead center the pistons all the way up you could also do that with a um, something soft you put it in the spark plug hole you dial it so that the piston is all the way up make sure your lobes are loose you look in the book you got one little divot there and one little divot there so you're a top dead center and now the engine is safe to work on now that you're at top dead center okay very important top dead center you got to make a decision whether you're going to do this the hard way or the easy way I'm going to do it what I'm going to consider the easy way and the first time I saw this was on uh, David's farm he was a um, YouTube person back a long time ago there was a bit of a scandal I don't some of his videos might still be on YouTube, but I don't think uh, David from David's Farm is on YouTube anymore. Used to hang out with Pug. Anyhow, so the way I'm going to do it is I have, this is known as a timing chain uh, breaker or 
timing chain splicer or timing chain repair kit, whatever you want to call it. And what you do is by using this little vise, and you got you can see the little pin there as I spin this out, right? You actually use that little pin in the vise to push one of the links, one of the link pins of the timing chain out, and then you could um, you can literally take the timing chain apart. You guys notice I put this nice long wire on both sides. I did that for a reason. I don't want either end to fall in, right? If the timing chain falls into the engine, you got to go back to old school, take this cover off, right? And I think, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure your flywheel's going to end up having to come off. These gears got to come out right because you got to get the timing chain on the sprocket and you could just see how far the sprocket is in right so i'm gonna i'm gonna use the splice technique some of you consider that sacrilegious some of you consider it clever um you can make up your own mind on that that's what i'm gonna do okay so the way this works is you got two bolts you tighten up here. This is the bigger outside one. And this one here controls the pin. So once you kind of clamp it, you tighten the, um, the pin, this little pin thing. And it actually pushes out the, um, if I'm showing you here, right, one of these guys. It actually pushes it out of place. And then when you spin this back out, right, you'll see that your timing chain is now in two pieces. Very simple to do. It doesn't strain, doesn't distort the chain or anything like that. So fairly easy. So now that I got this taken apart, I'm going to do the same thing here. Then what I'm going to do is attach the new chain to the old chain. Remember, my valves are closed. So I'm going to get the timing chain off the valves, and I'm going to feed it back around. Um, should be easy. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Anyway, you could see it's on, right? The hole of that anvil has one of the little um, extensions in it. The hole of this anvil has the other extension. So all I have to do is tighten the pin part of the vise, and I'll push the pin right out. Be careful that you don't drop the pin into the engine. That would be um, just poor form, right? Should you do that, I really do recommend figuring out where it is and getting it out of there. Because you'd be amazed at how damage, how much damage a small little pin could do. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to put some, um, some duct tape or something across here just to ward off evil spirits. So you can see here I wired together the new timing chain and old timing chain. I'm going to feed it in from the um, tensioner side because you guys could see it's a little bit more, um, I'm going to use the word complicated. I think it would be easier to feed from this side and take it out the other side. So um, <laughs> I'm not going to have the camera on while this is going on because if it doesn't go well, I might not be able to... Uh, rate this video not having any any profanity so i'm gonna give it a shot and we'll see what happens hang on so we took the chain apart and we fed it through and we did all that and it was all good by the way this one was tighter than it should have been and it turns out the uh the valves were dragging i just want to mention that so i uh readjust i adjusted the valves 
on this side. This side was fine, it was nice and loose, but that side was dragging, and it turns out the, um, the followers were too tight, so fix that. Anyhow, so fed the chain all through, and you know, I got my little extender wires to make sure nothing falls into the case, and now it's time to put the pin back in. That is not the easy part. It's like putting a pin back into a grenade. And by the way, you not be wanting to drop that pin in here, right? You kind of need it. So, what I found was best is I put the chain together using this extension pin. Okay, and it's hard to show you without five hands, but so I kind of stuck that out a little bit and put it together, backed it off, kind of put the pin into place, backed off the center a little bit, tightened it up, backed off the center a little more, tightened it up, backed off the center. That way the chain stayed in alignment and you very slowly pushed the pin back in and it went right where it should. And that's what I'm showing you right here. This is going to be easy to do because I can flip and flop the chain around anywhere I want to here, right? Doing it here is going to be a different story. And I think what I'm going to do is shoot the chain over the side and do it out in the open. Because once again, I really do not want to drop that pin into the motor. Um, when you're working on this, make sure you don't put the chain in upside down or any of that other stuff, right? That would just be bad form. See how this turns much easier? Um, yeah, it was dragging before. Uh, with these Mojaves, if the valves are too tight, they have a tendency to kick back like a mule. So it's better to have them a little loose, right? A little easier to start, but just my thoughts. So I think this is the best technique for putting the chain back together again. Hanging on to that little pin is difficult, and I found that by wrapping some copper wire around it, it seemed to be a little easier to hang on to. Now it's just a matter of, I back the pin out a little bit, tighten the anvil, so to speak, back out the pin, tighten the anvil. Hopefully it pushes it right in, and we're all good. Okay, all put together, and no binding, no problem, right? They're all in nice shape. And that's important if you put them together and they get and now it's stiff if you could tell the one you worked on is different than the others then you might might be in trouble but looks good feels good now it's just a matter of putting the sprockets on timing it up and we're done okay tubers you see the little notch in there right there the lights kind of flickering on it and how it's lined up with the top notch so that's good you see how that dot's right there, which is good. And you see how that dot is below the water line. That's not good. So what I have to do is I'm going to pop this out again and adjust this one more time and put it back together because I, I, think, I think that's one notch off. If you're one notch off, it might run. It'll probably run and it'll probably be hard to start and you probably won't hit any of the valves but why be one notch off let's fix this okay you can see the notch right there right lines up with the upper notch and you see that and you see that and the timing chain is nice and tight and the valves i ended up loosening them both up a little bit So, I'm sure there'll be some comments. Those are too loose. Um, on old engines, vintage engines, I have a tendency to run the valves a little loose. I, that's just me. Some of you guys could say, God, you're a jerk. And some of you guys say that no matter how much I tighten or loosen the valves. But anyway, yeah, we're all set. The chain is good. The tensioner is in. I made sure I loosened it and let it spring back a couple of times. I turned the engine around a dozen times. I did that again and turned it around a couple of times. 
and then check, 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 loose valves. It's all ready to go back together again. Then we have the next problem. Okay, so the first problem was the timing chain. The second problem is this was smashed in. I think I showed it to you guys. Um, right, this was battered in. And I was going to kind of cob the case, you know. I was going to um, kind of fill this in, bondo it up with, uh, you know, epoxy JB Weld, right? Kind of put some foil on the plug and then, you know, make, make sure that the uh, threads are there. And then just kind of, kind of bondo it up. But that's, you know, there's the pieces that broke out of it. I was trying to very gently ease it back out and it snapped. Anyway, I found this cover for 30 bucks on eBay, delivered. So I ended up going for it. Um, now it's just a matter of make sure you're spinning in the right direction, you know, tapping everything out, right? Um, and this is typically when you find out that other stuff is stripped or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not happy this water pump appears to be loose. But anyway, so I gotta go through this. This is, is not hard. I don't really consider this mechanic work. This is just mechanical, right? Um, bolts come out, bolts go back in. Anyhow. So I'm going to finish this up. Top's all done. Covers are all back on. Once we get the water pump on, this will be ready to bolt up. Okay, so it looks like the cover, the new cover, <laughs> the eBay cover, will go right on. So there's no issue with that. But unfortunately, the, um, the gasket... These never come off again all that easily. I think... Um, looks like the gasket is, is not one I'm going to be able to, uh, reuse, patch up, so to speak. Um, you guys could see it kind of, I kind of lost a little on the bottom and elsewhere. And after going through all this trouble, I just assume this engine behave itself. I also got to order it an oil filter. So I'm going to do that. So unfortunately, this project, I'm going to have to stop it here. You know, I feel good that I, uh, I got it this far. When you work on a timing chain, and I knew I wasn't going to tear the whole engine apart to put the timing chain in, um, or even if I was going to, there's a certain amount of hang on, let me think about this a moment type thought going into it. And I hope you guys do the same thing. I knew the last time I did a, a split timing chain, the kit I had bought, the timing chain kit, um, wasn't very good. This one, I don't know, it's about $30 on eBay. This one is much, much better. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to get that before I dove into it. I also knew I didn't want to completely tear the engine apart because there's a, there's a lot of ramifications to that. You got to get the crank bolt out. It seems that Kawasaki loves to put um, some kind of locking compound on that. So getting the crank bolt out isn't all that easily. You say, well, just heat it up. That's true, but then a lot of times um, you run into other problems. You end up cooking seals. Some of these aluminum cases don't take the heat all that well. And sometimes even with heating them up, they don't come out. If you break a bolt, now you got to get the crank out, out, out. You got to drill it um, all that hard. Not really once it's completely removed. Right, I could just put it in my lathe and spin it and drill it. That's not a problem. And even by, by using the lathe, I can theoretically um, tap the, um, the crank 
but that's like adding a whole bunch more pain to the whole situation. So I knew I was going to split the chain. I knew I needed a better kit to do it with, and I did. The other problem is I really didn't want to bring this engine back to life with kind of a crummy cover, right? I could have patched that up too, but, um, you know, given that parts are available for Moh Mojave's, I really kind of wanted to do that right. The other thing is I'm kind of putting it on a pristine frame, a better frame, right? If it was just a Rat um, 200X that you really can't get a decent cover for anyway, then you patch, right? You got, you got no choice. You patch or you don't run. So I, you know, I patched the 200X covers. This one I kind of wanted to do a little better than that. Anyway, so where am I? Um, I got to order a gasket. I'll do that tonight. I'll order an oil filter. And uh, we'll do, this engine will be ready to bolt up and ready to run properly. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to all that. In the meantime, I really want to thank you guys for dropping by to watch and comment, um, subscribe. I, uh, I look forward to some of the comments, particularly about splitting the timing chain i'm sure there's going to be comments oh i do that all the time and i'm sure there's going to be a few comments that go along the lines of yeah i did it or i had a friend who split a timing chain it ended up breaking and it cost me the engine especially considering that you split a china timing chain right i don't know it seemed to me the split went perfectly well it went back together perfectly right i tried moving it in all directions right all around that joint nothing was smashed too tight nothing was too loose i perfectly centered the pin i really spent a lot of time at it so i think it's going to work but <laughs> we'll find out if uh if you hear me grumbling and see me pushing or towing a mojave in from the backfield Anyway, I, once again, I want to thank all you folks for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please, please, feet down, heads up, get out and enjoy all your days. Pick a miserable project and work on it today. Maybe you'll get it done. Bye now.